Assalamu alaikum I'm Hina Ajaz welcome to Pakistan today on the show I have ambassador of the republic of Tajikistan to Pakistan he has been in Pakistan since 2019 it's been roughly two and a half years I was talking to him off air about his experiences but it would be amazing to share his experiences with you the audience today and then on the other side I have professor Dr Niaz Akhtar Sahab he of course has had an outstanding career both as an administrator and a researcher currently he is serving as the vice chancellor of university of punjab so much to learn from him as well since he carries vast experiences in uh, research and also he's been uh, president uh, he's been also uh, awarded this uh, he's been awarded sitare imtiyaz in the year 2015 by the president of pakistan what an honor assalamu alaikum doctor assalamu alaikum thank you and very much and excellency thank you so much for joining us welcome to pakistan you've been in pakistan since 2019 Uh, you've had a great uh, career in foreign affairs you've uh, served in various diplomatic positions you've been all over the world technically right almost <laughs> almost now you're in pakistan so how has this journey been for you since 2019 of course covid hit the world however a few months prior to covid you did experience a lot of pakistan i believe how did how was it how has it been for you for two and a half years now yeah Thank you first of all I'm very honored to be here with you to share my experience and to be guest of your program. Uh you absolutely right when I was appointed to this post it was a kind of kind of a new direction of my activity. Absolutely. Because my previous career was mostly focused on international organizations and European countries. But I was honored and I was happy to have a new experience. And now since this more than two and a half years I am happy to be here. to serve my country and also to serve relations with Pakistan. Right. There's a lot in common that we share. Of course, uh, population is a different factor. Tajikistan is also relatively a very new country, a 30-year-old mm -hmm. nation. That's wonderful, but the wonders it has achieved, we would like to share that with our audience today as well. And I would like Doc Sab to also comment on that. But before that, I would like you all to see a report that we have prepared on Tajikistan. What a beautiful country it is! After seeing this report I do feel like going to Tajikistan it's gorgeous it's beautiful it has lakes it has um rivers and mountains and it's known for hiking Dr Sab uh, have you been to Tajikistan not really you haven't yes. would you like to go after seeing yes, this report yes i have seen just seen uh, the movie 
Yeah. New York clips and I think uh, it is the best country in the Central Asian states. Yes. And uh, in order to have a good relation because that is a Muslim country, brother Muslim countries and we love to have the good relation. Uh, and uh, Taj Tajikistan is our priority. Absolutely. In Punjab University we have established the regional integration center. Really? In order to strengthen our relation with the Tajikistan and the other uh, Central Asian states. So in terms of your student exchange program, do you get a lot of Tajiks uh, to your, at your university? Yes, I, I think we have signed the MOU with the Tajik government and uh, our priority is to exchange the students, hmm. to have more students from Tajikistan, faculty exchange with the Tajik universities and to have the giant research with the uh, higher education institutions in Tajikistan. Right. And this is, this is our priority now. And we have a good history with the Tajikistan. Therefore, uh, uh, the major, uh, I think, uh, Pakistani institutions can play a role. That is the collaboration because education has no boundary. Therefore, we can have the good relation in terms of um, the, uh, students exchange, faculty ex exchange, to have the uh, giant uh, research projects, conferences, and I think we can have the we can strengthen our relation with the Tajikistan. I think a lot yeah. is happening on yeah. that front as well. And uh, in fact, in the year 2009, a rail network, an agreement about it between Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Tajikistan was signed. And there was some trade that was carried out because Tajikistan is a landlocked country. So you wanted to get through our ports through via Afghanistan because you are bordering with Afghanistan. So some work did happen on that front, right? Yes, absolutely right. And you mentioned a very important part of our relations uh, that Pakistan seaports are the closest to us. Yes. We don't have any other choice for now because <laughs> to get the, the closest uh, seaports, it, it's possible only uh, through the territory of Afghanistan and coming to Pakistan, warm water, deep seaports. And you mentioned the project which, which was signed, but unfortunately due to the situation in Afghanistan, yes. it was not possible to complete it. Yes. But at least Pakistan and Tajikistan sites are doing and yes. uh, they are prepared prepared to, to continue with this. We hope that with stabilization of situation in you Afghanistan... You could not go with the initial plan naturally because <clears throat> yeah. of some issues, but our relations are good. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I can I can assure you 100% that we, we, we have no issues, no problems. So Tajik you. is basically where, uh, I mean, Tajikistan is derived from the word Tajik. Tajik is a Persian word. Yes. They say Tajiks are descendants of Iranians. Mm -hmm. So it's a Persian word, uh, but Rush, it was a part of Soviet Union. In 91, you became independent. After that, your economy grew at a, uh, at a wonderful rate of 9 point something percent, I think 9.6 percent. You export cotton, mm -hmm. aluminium, but your economy majorly relies on remittances as well. I believe, as per research, that a lot of Tajiks go and work in Russia as well. So you heavily rely on those remittances, about 26%. Mm -hmm. So, um, what about the employment situation in Tajikistan, your country, at the moment? Why do so many people need to migrate, especially go to Russia and work there? Yes. Uh I think the, the main reason is the collapse of Soviet Union because before you uh, aware about that all those economic ties they were so close between former Soviet republics in the Soviet Union. When it happened then most of our industry was also collapsed because of uh, those ties are not existing anymore and right. we, we, we were not able to produce enough products in order, in order to strengthen our economy. And of course, since we have or we had these close ties, people try to find some other places to, to get work. But of course, nowadays, situation are, are improving, but we still have a quite a big number of population working abroad, especially in Russian Federation. So are you trying I to introduce also, reforms that is going to contain yes, your yeah, population absolutely. in your country, so in order to avoid brain drain? Absolutely, yes, yes. Now, now uh, there is also a, a flow back from those people who are already established there, who are organized a good business there. 
Right. Now part of them are coming back to continue their business and their activity back to their excellent. home country. Excellent, that's excellent yeah. news. So are you encouraging them to also explore uh, investment options into countries such as ours? Pakistan, there's a, there's a huge uh, room of opportunity I'd say here. Yes, with regard to our economic relations uh, with Pakistan, we're, we're interested mostly in, in textile industries. You are? One, uh, as, as an example, because right. Pakistan is a great, great experience in it. And Pakistan products are very well known in our country. Mm -hmm. So now we are such working... Such as? Such as everything, everything produced from cotton, from some other fabrics, they are very well known. Oh, the I mean, fabric is popular? Yes, it's very That's popular. Excellent yes, especially our ladies like so, so <laughs> Pakistani fabrics. They make their suits and dresses from it. How lovely. Yes, it is. So if you will visit Tajikistan one day, you will find many of Pakistan. So I, I'll feel I'm in Pakistan to some extent when I yes. see the fabric. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right. So how much have you enjoyed living here on a lighter note? Now let's come to the lighter side. How much have you enjoyed living in Pakistan since 2019 in terms of the culture, in terms of um, our habits, our food, everything? No. Generally, I enjoyed living here because, as you mentioned, we have a lot of communalities. Yes. Even Urdu language is, is quite close Persian, to Tajik. Persian yes. words, I mean. I can uh, recognize some, I don't know, 25-30% of wordings. Mm -hmm. Way of life, our religion, as Professor mentioned, and uh, Pakistani people are very hospitable. They are very friendly. F during this time, I never met anybody who is aggressive or who is not friendly. So all right. people are very good, especially when they know that you are a foreigner from a brotherly country. Right. So we enjoyed it and uh, for everyday life, also from point of my professional activity, we don't feel any kind of problems of this. You don't, yeah. you don't. So you've enjoyed yeah. your stay here. Absolutely. Yeah. So excellent. But you've lived in some uh, uh, European nation, nations as well. So comparing that experience with the Pakistani experience, I'm sure it's diverse, it's different. So if you were to be uh, relocated elsewhere on a diplomatic mission elsewhere, would you choose that or Pakistan? No, if I will be given this opportunity to continue my career here, I will do it with pleasure. Doxab, isn't that amazing news? <laughs> <laughs> so Doxab, uh, don't you think there's a lot of similarity between the Tajik culture and the Pakistani culture? Because 98% uh, of the Tajik population is Muslim. Yes. I think the same is in Pakistan, 98% Muslim. Yes. Uh, another thing which His Excellency was mentioning that was about the common areas. For example, when we are talking about the cotton, the cotton is the strength of the, our country. Yes. The, we can get the benefit uh, from Tajikistan about the industrialization. They are very good in the mechanical side, in the energy side, so the Pakistan can also get the benefit. Absolutely. So we have some, uh, for example, textile sector, in terms of cotton, when we are saying, hmm. yes, we have a very good quality cotton. We have a very good quality textile institutes where the, we can have the collaboration again. You know, um, uh, I have served as a vice chancellor hmm. in textile university hmm. in Faisalabad. Therefore, I know my strength. My you strength means our country. Set up a technology center in Karachi. Yes. So textile machinery with technology, your ex expertise in these two areas combined yeah. together. When I'm saying my uh, uh, experience, my means Pakistan. Absolutely. Pakistan is rich in textile side. Yes. We have a very good education in the textile sector. We have a very good um, quality of cotton. Right. We can have the good. Uh, we can share our experience with the Tajikistan. Secondly, I think uh, in education side, again, we have been discussing his, with the His Excellency. Right. We are very good in uh, art and, and I would like to culture. further discuss that, Doc Sab. I have to take a short break and when we return, I would like to understand what kind of an exchange in the education sector are you planning? What, what is there to look forward to? And I'm very excited about that. But before we leave, I'm going to uh, quickly mention in Tajikistan, uh, the rivers in Tajikistan, such as Vakhsh and pa uh, Panj, as they say, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, have great hydropower potential. 
So, uh, Tajikistan wants investment. Have you been looking for investment in those areas? I want to understand, have you received any? What's, um, what's in the pipeline? But right after this short break. Welcome back. Some very interesting conversation is about to begin. The exchange program in terms of education, things you have planned. So, His Excellency and Doc Saab, what talks have you held so far? You know, we were for, discussing... For your sector. Yes, we were discussing something earlier. That was, that was how we can collaborate in what areas. One thing is very important, which His Excellency mentioned that he would like to continue to work in Pakistan. What absolutely, is the reason? Absolutely. What is the reason? Yes. The reason is the most important link between Tajikistan and Pakistan, Pakistan, Afghanistan with the other Central Asian states. That is Kalma, La ilaha illallah. That is the binding force which is keeping us together. Now, because of having the good assets, the expertise, natural resources we can share with each other. Right. We can bring Afghanistan with Tajikistan, Azerbaijan, uh, Uzbekistan. So that is why our country, my country, is focusing on the Central Asian states. Absolutely. Because we have the common culture, we have the same religion, we have the good expertise. If all these Central Asian states Join hand together, it will be beneficial for all the countries of the Central Asia. Right, and we don't have to call this nation um, or any nation a small nation because together yeah. we can be a great regional power. Yes. Now, coming back to your education exchange program yeah. between Pakistan and Tajikistan, what is happening on that front? You see, for example, my College of Art and Design. We discussed this issue, the collaboration points with His Excellency. We are very rich in that. We have different programs, architecture, fine arts, textile design, right. uh, design, fine arts. So we can have the good collaboration have with Have you had that. any talks so far? Yes, about earlier we had discussion. What is happening? And then? Yes, uh, we have signed the MOU. Oh, now, you have? Congratulations yes, yes. to both of you. Now, again, uh, we have the history department. We can have the historical... Uh, and Tajikistan uh, has some really great history and, you know, yes, a long yes, history. Yes. Again, we have the Cultural Studies Institute. We can have uh, the giant uh, work together. So I think a uh, lot of areas are there. Now the things should move forward. Yes, we have identified. Uh, right. And His Excellency is very keen. You can see he himself is here. He has uh, traveled all the way from Islamabad again for this purpose. Tomorrow we will have again. I think uh, he yeah. likes Lahore. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so are you fond of Lahore? Yes, I am. Because uh, as I mentioned, Lahore is a uh, cultural hub, cultural center of, of Pakistan. I had the opportunity to visit some historical places which are also connected historically to our region. Mm -hmm. So movement of people was something which connected all of us some centuries ago. Absolutely. And maybe using this opportunity, I would like to, to express my thankfulness to our dear professors at uh, University of Punjab provided five scholarships and wow. in future we will increase it definitely. Also they provided us with academic exchange and now we're expecting a delegation from Punjab University to visit Tajikistan to meet their <coughs> colleagues. So something yes. is going on, yes. yes. We already established uh, quite a good co That's wonderful, that's wonderful. So far there are five scholarships and the number is expected to go up. Yeah. Yes. I think uh, in our last discussion, one was about how we can exchange the students, one was to give them some scholarships. Right. And secondly, to help them in the curriculum, designing the curriculum. You see, Punjab University, again, His Excellency, as he has visited our university, this is the one of the oldest institutions in the region. Absolutely, yes. That's true. Established in 1882. Yes. At the moment, internationally, we are top ranked. Alhamdulillah, and but we are struggling to have our uh, uh, deserved position in the international uh, academic institutions. So we are working on that. But whatever capacity we have, 
surely we own this uh, Tajikistan that is our brother Muslim country. In all areas we are ready to cooperate and we have signed that is why in all the areas, not only uh, in cultural right. studies, in art and design, we are very rich in the life sciences. Hmm. We are very good in our English language and literatures. Absolutely. The other languages like uh, uh, Persian is there. Arabic is there, so we can have the uh, discussion on that right. as well. Right, so uh, coming back to hydropower projects. So your rivers in your country, such as Bakshan Panj, or Panj, I don't know how to pronounce that. Panj is the word, okay. They have great hydropower potential and uh, you have been looking for investment into this project, so you could use it for um, you could provide it to domestic users in Tajikistan as well as export it. What happened on that front? Yes, uh, let's start from the point that we utilized only 5% of our energy capacity till now. So 95% is not explored yet. So that, that means a great investment opportunity. Yes, it is. The second, we already have one joint project which is CASA 1000. This is project of four countries. Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. So the collaboration is already there and investments are there. Even that this project is implementing under the World Bank capacity, but every country has its own share, its own contribution to this project. And of course, in future, we will be looking for investment from Pakistan side, because Pakistan is interested in cheap and clean energy. Absolutely. And Tajikistan is there to provide it the whole year. And you have the means to do it. You yes. have the 10 kilometer long rivers, you know, they're like yes. really, really yes. long. Capacity is, is very high and we know that Pakistan side is interested in it and uh, we, will, we will continue our cooperation in energy sector. We look forward to that. Thank we you. We look forward to that kind of cooperation because getting energy from uh, such uh, cheaper sources yeah. is the best solution available and why not from a Central Asian state, a brother, a Muslim state. <laughs> so, um, coming back to your lifestyle here, the way you have experienced our culture, you're saying there's a lot of commonalities. Tell me about the food, have you settled in with our, um, you know, the spicy side or do you not have, do you not like the spicy bit? No, no, no. I, I, we all like spicy food because we are from Asia. Maybe the only difference between uh, our food and Pakistani food is that in Tajikistan cuisine, we never add spices while cooking. Oh, so you don't add spices yes. while you're cooking? Yes, but people eat a very spicy food, but they add it separately. Oh, Here, when you it's ask, garnished later, yes. let's put it that way. Here, when I order something, I all the time ask <laughs> for less spicy because sometimes, right. it, but it's very delicious food. Especially food from uh, KPK region. It's oh, you very like close, that food? Close yeah, it, it's not cuisine. spicy. That is yeah. not spicy. They mainly use Meat salt foods, and pepper. Yes, it's very close to our cuisine. Yes. Oh, that is close. Yeah. Right, right. So, but what, what's your favorite uh, food Dampukht, item from our palate? Dampukht is one of my favorites. Uh huh. Yeah. This is right, right. Very good so, one. tell us about food in your country. You're saying it's very similar to the one in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, mm -hmm. KPK. Yeah. So, it's mainly meat based. Yes, meat, some uh, food with rice, uh, pastry food. So, it, there are different kinds. And we also have influence from other Central Asian countries. Uh huh. Such because as? Such from, for example, from some uh, countries like Uzbekistan, right. Kazakhstan, because in Kazakhstan people are nomads, they yes. live in Steppe. Absolutely. So they have different kind of food, but it's since a mix. we're close, it's a mix, yes. Right, right. And what about the Russian influence in uh, Tajikistan? Because obviously it was a part of it at one yes, time. Yes, yes, So yes, how yes. much influence, I believe, uh, like we were talking of air, you can speak fluent Russian. Yeah. But it's more of an ethnic language now in Tajikistan. So I'm sure there must be a lot of other cultural influence um, and other influences from back from the Soviet days still prevalent in Tajikistan. Is that true? Yeah, because we live 70 years in one country. Yes. And of course, uh, influence are there, influences are there, language, uh, even style of life, style of dressing, uh, food. Food, we have yes. a lot of Russian food, for example, which is very common in many Tajik families. Right. Uh, you can find it easily. And we still have very good connections and strategic partnership with Russia. So there are a lot of commonalities which we still keep. 
And Russian is a language of communication in Central Asia. Yeah, absolutely. Because absolutely. there are differences in language, but Russian is connecting us in terms of yeah. communication. Absolutely. So, um, what about the tourism front between Pakistan and Tajikistan? What measures have you taken that tourism becomes smooth and uh, let's say the, the volumes go up? From Tajikistan to Pakistan and Pakistan is going to Tajikistan. What measures have you taken? First of all, I, I'm not going to tell you a lot about my country, that how it's beautiful. Every country We've is beautiful. We've seen it. Yes. We've seen it. It's gorgeous. The, it is. The biggest problem which we have is the connectivity. Right. The problem is that there are no direct flights. Tourists have to travel via Dubai. It's about 20. But you 20. have 20 plus airlines, I believe. Not so no? many. Not so no, many. Not, not so, so many. many. No, most of them are from other countries. For example, from Russia, right, Kazakhstan. Right. Right. So it's uh, probably others. relevant to yes, that. Yeah, yeah. When we will sort it out, or we will find a solution with connectivity, then there is a huge interest of Pakistanis to visit our country. So why is there no direct flight at the moment? Because I think the problem is uh, our airlines are concentrated in different regions in the world, but not in in, in regional connectivity. But now they are coming to it. I think the this COVID needs is work. something which forces us to find other ways of cooperation, not looking to Europe, to Americas, but also doing something in the region. Right. So the, first of all, there has to be a solution for direct flights. Yes. Then uh, I don't know how the visa system works now for Tajikistan and for Tajiks to come to Pakistan. How we're facilitating them, Doc? Sir, do you have any idea? Uh, honestly, what uh, His Excellency has said that this is an issue. Many of the Pakistani students, they want to travel to Tajikistan, right. to the Central Asian state for study, because they cannot get admissions in Pakistan. Therefore, they've traveled to uh, these Central Asian states. The problem is, again, this connectivity. It can be through the railway system as well, if we have a very settled and peaceful Afghanistan. That is why Pakistan is- nothing like a but, direct flight. Yes, but, but uh, Pakistan is trying to have this communication because the line is there. We were talking about the hydro energy. Hmm. Pakistan, honestly, that they need, Pakistan needs that cheaper energy. Of this is this do. is the cheapest source of energy. Exactly. If we look into the thermal side, it is 30 times expensive than the hydro. Absolutely. Therefore, I think uh, uh, the, uh, we were talking about the Corona time, what we did, the, His Excellency was mentioning. Pakistan has a online conference we had already with the Tajikistan and the, with the other Central Asian states. Right. I think we should move forward. One is the connectivity issue. It is in the, in the interest of these Central Asian states as well with, with the Pakistan. Uh, the, some students, they can come f um, from the Central Asian state to Pakistan because we have a established uh, international educational right. system. At the same time, you know, Pakistani higher education sector, how much they, they can accommodate the Absolutely. Pakistani Dr. students. I have to take a short break and when we return, we'll continue our discussion on this. Uh, but when we come back, I'm going to reveal some very interesting um, mountain peak names that Tajikistan has for its mountains. I found that very, very interesting. I'm going to share that with you, but right after a break. Welcome back. Now I'm just going to remind you I have um, I have Tajikistan on one side, Pakistan on one side. So much to talk about. I have the ambassador sitting right next to me, and then I have the vice chancellor for University of Punjab. What great icons I have on the show today, and I'm sure you've learned so much about Tajikistan today. Well, I'm tempted definitely to visit Tajikistan, land of Tajiks, and. Um, so much history there. So tell us about your cultural centers. How much is culture prevalent still in Tajikistan? Uh, I cannot mention one or two destinations. I think yeah. the whole Tajikistan is full of history. Of course, if you would like to have something modern, you should be in our capital. If you would like to see something historical, you have to go to southern part of Tajikistan, which is close to Afghan border. And also in our northern part, you also will have 
some interesting cultural and historical places. And also religious tourism can be something which Pakistanis are interested to visit different places of, of really? religious tourism. Yes. Wow. And you have four provinces, I believe, just like us. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. And how are they ethnically different? And obviously, geographically, if you could explain that, please. Actually, our nation is one nation, mm -hmm. one united nation with name Tajiks. Mm -hmm. The difference is only because of living conditions and living standards in different parts of Tajikistan. But we don't have two diverse ethnicity. Of course, we have a small percentage of Russian-speaking population. That's a very small percentage. Yes, but the second uh, minority of our population are Uzbeks, which are living in our country for centuries. That's roughly 9%. Yeah, something maybe like this, because now I, maybe, I, I can be wrong with statistics, but it's hmm. something like this. And, but most of population are Tajiks. They speak Tajik, they speak different languages and there is no big differences in, in, in different regions. So For example, it's, it's all very unified. Yeah, in, uh, in compare with Pakistan, because in Pakistan you can feel that people are... Different quite, regions, yeah. different yeah. languages, and within languages there's sub-languages. Yeah. Of course, dialects sometimes yes. are different, pronunciation are different. You've noticed that, yeah, right? But, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but generally in our country, yes, it's... It's, uh, it's pretty much yeah, uniform. Pretty, yeah. Right, so you have around 900, some 900 of your rivers. That's why your potential and capability to produce hydropower. So you, um, and then the, the peaks, the mountain peaks that you have, have some very interesting names. I, I just fascinated me so much. One is called Independence Peak. Another name given to it is the Revolution Peak. Then Ibn Sina Peak. Then there's a Kalmax uh, Peak. Then you have glaciers, you're known for glaciers. And then 2% uh, of your country's area is covered by lakes, yes. some gorgeous looking lakes. So which area were you born in and do, did you grew up by in somewhere around the mountains or by a river or a lake? What was it like? Oh, I was born in our capital. Oh, yes. so you're from the modern yes. city. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was born and studied and grown up uh, on our capital. But of course, I visited different parts of my country and you mentioned with regard to name of pigs, uh, they were named during the Soviet time. In this regard, some names are quite strange. Right. But now a Karl Marx them, yes, peak. Karl Marx yeah. is a very well-known uh, yes. I mean, person. So of it course. was a tradition to give names of those persons to different places. We normally name our roads like that. <laughs> 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 right. So there's a XYZ street and ABC yeah, street. Yeah. But you, since you have got so many mountain peaks, I believe you're naming them all too. Yeah. <laughs> right, so but that's a very interesting fact. So, right, so you grew up in the city. Yeah. But uh, are you attached to your countryside? Let's put it yes, that way. Yes, absolutely. I, I traveled a lot and I like, to, I like to be in countryside. I have many relatives in different parts of Tajikistan, in north, in, 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 in south. Uh, and of course, countryside is always good because to be in city all the time, when you will need some kind of rest and uh, change in your mind, then you have to go out of city. Well, have you visited Pakistan's northern areas? Yes, I have Where visited have Gilgit, I have visited Hunza, I have visited uh, Swat, so I was oh, in the okay. very interesting places of Pakistan. Well, I, I, I don't know, I have a feeling you really do love Pakistan, right? <laughs> That's great. So, Dog Saab, um, University of Punjab, yes. what a great institution. And um, its ranking has also improved, I believe, yeah, recently. Yeah, if yeah. you could shed some light on it, please. Uh, I, in the last three, four years, we have been fo focusing on the quality of education in the international ranking, impact of our research on the society, socio-economic impact of our university. So we have been focusing on that. Because of that, uh, our focus, now the things have improved. We have the overall restructuring of the academic departments. Now we have more than 150 departments, centers, institutes and colleges. 150, that's a big 150. number. 150 and uh, we initially three years back we were having uh, 13, 12, 13 faculties. Now we have 20 faculties. Faculties, under the faculty we have different departments and centers. Uh, because of this restructuring. Which are the new departments added? Uh, 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 faculty of uh, faculty of information and computing, information technology and computing. Excellent. Faculty of geosciences, 
Faculty of Agriculture Sciences, Faculty of Electrical, Electronics and Environmental Engineering, Faculty of Quality and Industrial Systems Engineering, and so on. And uh, because of this uh, opening of different departments, we have appointed more than 150 professors. In my 35 years of my stay in Punjab University, the professors were normally remained 70, 70, 65 to 70, but now they are 150, and we have put all these professors, head of departments in all Any these. Any faculty members from the international community? Yes, we have uh, international faculty, visiting faculty we have. Because of this, if you look into Punjab University 2018 ranking, when we first went uh, into the international ranking, we were ranked in Asia 232, the top 56% of the institutions. That was our baseline. And today, uh, top 21.2% institution, top institutions. So more than 50% we have gained, and now we are at 145. Instead of 232, now we are right. 145. In right. 2018, Got it, Dr. G, G, G. in 2018, we were the top 78% institutions in the world. Wow! And today we are at the 61, 62%. So in three years, this is the good sign that the Pakistani institutions they are working. Well, a lot and of credit, I must say, goes to Doc Saab also because with his joining the institutions. When he joined it, I mean, he's brought in so much improvement. And let's not forget, he's been awarded Sitara Imtiaz. So that is just um, amazing, Doc Saab. Thank and you your very expertise much. Thank and you research and everything. Uh, I mean, there's so much to learn from you. I think this one program is not going to be enough. So, you see, when we were doing the research, this that right. was the academic side. Absolutely. But on the research side, yeah. Initially, the, the students and my faculty members were doing the research for the sake of getting the degree. The students were doing the research, and whereas my faculty members were yes. doing the research to get the promotions. But now we are focusing how much is the right. impact on the society. Well, Doxab, now we will be showing some pictures of Pakistan right next to Tajikistan, where you will be uh, not able to differentiate the two. We very intelligently pick up two pictures, one from Pakistan, one from Tajikistan, and I'd like the two of you to comment on your respective countries. Please, let's take a look at it. See how intelligently we've picked up those peaks. <laughs> so, yes, please, would you like to comment uh, on the Tajikistan side? Yeah, I think it's one of the peaks or one of the uh, lake No, that's mountains. a river that we see. This is a river, yeah. Beautiful. And uh, on the Pakistani side, Doc Saab, yes, please. Yes, you can see the similarity. In the first in first picture, we were having the glaciers. Doctor, where and the is this? If you can comment, yeah. please, in Pakistan. Do you recognize this, please? Again, this is the northern area of Pakistan. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And cotton and picking. This is, cotton the south picking. Of, this is the south of Pakistan. <laughs> and Ladies are very yeah. similar. <laughs> oh yes, that's true. That's true. Right, right. So, you know, I feel if one is to visit Tajikistan because of the Persian heritage and the la influence on the language also, and we have a lot of Persian uh, terms also injected into our language, Urdu, I believe communication is not such a big problem. No, I don't think that you will feel, at least you will not feel uncomfortable. You will find a way how and to And that's so important people. when you visit yeah. a new country, right? Yeah. So, uh, what are the similar, I mean, if you could pick up any similar words between your language and ours? I think many of them. Like what? Like, uh, really? Yes, it's so, totally Which is welcome, the same. yeah. Yeah. And? Zabardast. Zabardast? Yes, it's totally So, you the also same. have the same yes. term in your... Broader. It's totally the same. So, there are many, many words, yes. Right, so again, not a problem, except for the spicy food has yes. been a little bit of a problem. <laughs> so are the Tajiks really friendly, warm and hospitable? Yes, I think like like all people They're in this part They're not uptight. Of the, no, I think the only influence to our people, uh, when people are from mountains, they're more strict in many things. Uh -huh. People from more plain area, they're maybe more calm. Because this is the influence of their way of life, but generally people People are What's very the friendly. general what occupation? The what yes, about the yes. south? Same, I think. South and people close to Afghan borders are very nice. friendly. And yes. they're more friendly. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. The same with Pakistan. 
actually yeah. you're right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. the same with Pakistan. Well, what's the major occu main occupation rather of the Tajiks traditionally? You mean in terms of job? Yes. Uh, 70, according to last statistics, about 70% of our population are dealing with some rural kind of activity because we are agricultural country. We are not industrial same with country. Us. Yes. Yes, same with us. Yes. So the rest <laughs> doing some services, working in factories, in offices, and but the majority are working in, in agriculture. But you've moved Europe. a lot towards ind industrialization yes. also. Yes. This is and so did we, but mainly we're an agro based country. And uh, have you uh, brought in uh, some modern modernization into your agriculture sector? Yes, definitely. For example, cotton growing. For the last maybe 10, 20 years, uh, those intensified ways of production mm -hmm. and less polluting, Excellent. not using uh, chemical fertilizers and also to save workers. And we are, for example, totally rid Health of... Health hazards, yes, all of that. We are totally rid of child work. Never we use child, for example. For Very work. nice. Yes, so those kind of uh, technologies are now on place. Well, Excellency, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure interviewing you, talking to you about Tajikistan. So much that I, on a personal level, also learned. And I wish and hope and... Um, that the, the initiatives taken from the Tajikistan side and the work being done from Pakistan side that these two Central Asian countries work together and um, work on especially the energy sector because there's so much that we can receive, there's so much that you can give and vice versa. We're similar, so tourism should also increase between the two nations. Very important. Doc Saab, your achievements in the education se uh, sector are commendable and I wish you all the best. Thank you very with much. All Thank your, you. um, with all your, uh, let's say, um, uh, all, everything that you've planned for the sector. I would just wouldn't say for the University of Punjab, but what you're doing and the way you're contributing, it is meant for the education sector of Pakistan, okay. for Thank the youth you. of Pakistan. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much again. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will see you next week and uh, on the same show, same time. In the meantime, you keep watching Discover Pakistan.